Now, in contradiction to unconditional love, I've heard that some people teach that God has plans for us that include all the bad things that happen to us in our lives. And you know, I've had this question, you know, a number of times regarding, you know, a scroll that we have that has on it everything that's happened in our lives. And we must have agreed to all the bad things. And um, we came here with this scroll for terrible things that would include sickness, pain, abuse, trauma, sorrow, even death itself. Now, that is in total contradiction to the unconditional love of God. And I absolutely 100 percent do not believe that and would certainly refute that truth because it isn't true. Some say that we accepted a scroll that included all the negative things before coming to earth. Therefore, we must have accepted all that has happened in our lives, good and bad, as God's will. Now, I think that is something that totally misrepresents who God is. I do not believe that God, our loving Heavenly Father, even intended anything bad to happen in our lives. All his thoughts about us are good. His intentions for us are good. It is fate to believe that God is sovereign and therefore everything that happens must be his will. Because he operates within giving us freedom to make our own choices. And the consequences of those choices are not something that he wanted for us. And mercy will overcome those consequences if we embrace mercy. Jeremiah 29, 11, a very well-known verse which is not directly speaking to us, but I think it does give us a direct understanding of what God is like. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for prosperity and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God is love. God is good. So our scroll reflects that truth. So what is our scroll? Well, it's the record of who we are created by God to be. It is our identity. The scroll of destiny reveals our identity and how we outwork God's desire and intention in our lives. The scroll of our life is the record of what we do as sons of God. Now, there may be a disconnect between the scroll of our destiny and God's desire for us and the things that we actually do. But this is not talking about sin because we're new creations in Christ. We're not sinners. We're saints. We're made righteous. So what is it talking about? Well, there's a number of Bible verses that talk about scrolls. Um, one, Psalm 40, verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come. It is written of me in the scroll of the book. I delight to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. Now, that was obviously talking and referring to Jesus, but it's also referring to us. Um, so it was written of me in the scroll of the book. I delight to do. Well, Jesus came only to do what he saw the Father doing. And he didn't come to be under some external law, but the love that was in his heart, the law of love that was in his heart. Romans 5, 1 talks about a scroll. I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. Um, now, I believe that God has created us and made us to be the person that he wanted us to be, and we're then born into a world that somewhat messes that up. But his original desire and purpose is encoded within the DNA of our spirit. And our spirit can reform that image into our whole being when spirit, soul and body become unified and one. So Psalm 139, 13 says, for you created my inwardmost parts. You know, you could say he created our heart he created our personality who we really are our redemptive gift or part of that you wove me in my mother's womb i will give thanks to you because i am awesomely and wonderfully made wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well is that true it might have been true for the psalmist is it true for us does your soul know it very well because your spirit knows it absolutely but does your soul know? Is there a disconnect between your spirit and your soul? That disconnect is what needs to be unified. So the spirit and soul can become one unified together and not operating in a disconnected understanding. Verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the depths of the earth. 
Your eyes have seen my formless substance, and in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. Now, again, some people will say, oh, there are a certain number of days that are ordained, and then we're going to die. It doesn't say that. It just says all the days. Well, there's no end to the days from God's perspective. How precious are, all, are also are your thoughts for me, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And there's this whole sense here that God is inspiring the psalmist in this thing to share and reveal this amazing understanding of who we are, who God made us to be. And we can come into that knowledge and know the truth of that and become an outworking of that. And that is what our scroll is all about. Our scroll is not a whole list of instructions of things we need to do or else. It is a revelation of who we are that empowers us when we are at rest in being who we are to outwork and flow from us. Ephesians 2.10 says we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. Now, this isn't works. This isn't dead works. This isn't works to earn our salvation, to earn God's favor and blessing because we're good and we try and do it and we try and be obedient. This is the things that are good, things that outflow from the fact that we're created in Christ Jesus. We are his workmanship. That God has already prepared who we are so we can walk out the reality of who we are and express who we are to the world in which we live, to be an expression of that goodness, to love one another as he's loved us to reflect his love in a world that desperately needs it so these good works are in perfect alignment with how we are made i.e our identity as sons of god they're not a prescriptive list of things we need to do but they are revealing who we are that then when we just are ourselves will enable us to outwork who we are in this world in the things that we do that are reflecting our father god because we're sons the outworking reflects God. Our intended identity and redemptive gift reflect his heart and his unconditional love. So the outworking of who we are reflects God. He gave us this intended identity and he wanted us to be like him. We're made in his image and likeness. But we're all unique. We're all wonderfully made. We're not copies or clones. We're all individually made, each a facet of the multifaceted God that we love. So we will see the things that the Father's doing aligned to our identity. The Father will not show us things that are uh, that align with other people. He won't show us those things. If we're looking at what other people are doing and trying to do those things, then we're trying to be like somebody else. We should not try to do what other people are doing. We just need to be at rest in who we are so that we outwork the things which are aligned to us. Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. He had a relationship with the Father. He was in the Father, the Father was in him. They were doing this together in relationship. And that's what sons of God are designed to do. Our scroll is not filled with a list of prescriptive good works, but it's a revelation of who we are and how we have been made with our redemptive gifts and our identity. Our scroll is a revelation of the Father's heart and desires so we can cooperate with him. Our scroll of destiny is not a guarantee, but an opportunity to cooperate with the Father as a son. Now, we've all missed opportunities. We've all had some mixed motives. What happens then? If the scroll of our life is not actually as the scroll of our destiny is supposed to be what happens well this is what happened to me and it's an outworking of 1 corinthians 3 11 but no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid which is jesus christ now if um, anyone builds on the foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay or straw each one's work will become evident for the day will show it because it's to be revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each one's work so the scroll of our life is the record of the outworking of our new creation life in Christ. It's not a record of our lost identity because that is completely gone 
God has no record of our lost identity. He keeps no record of any of it. Neither should we. But it is a record of our life as a son. So the wood, hay and straw are the things we may have done with mixed motives or the things we may not even have seen and therefore didn't do. And when I embraced this, I was on the father's lap on the throne of grace and I was enjoying his amazing love. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord came past and the father said, do you want to see your scroll? And I thought, oh, yeah, I want to see my scroll. Now, perhaps oh, sort of regretted it a few minutes later, but that's what I said. So the spirit of the fear of the Lord had this scroll sealed front and back, gave me the scroll and then led me to this area, this cave that should appeared like it, which was black. Um, and I walked in there feeling somewhat uh, uncertain and actually quite fearful. And I was quite shaking. And ultimately, I went before the father and the love of the fire that came from his eyes. And he asked me to open the scroll and the scroll opened. And I saw all the wood, hay, straw, gold, silver, precious stones. And there was no condemnation. There was no guilt. There was no fear. There was just mercy. And the fire of love came from God's eyes and consumed all the wood, hay and straw. And there was nothing other than gold, silver and precious stones. And then the uh, long story short, the scroll was flipped over and I saw all the things that I'd missed opportunities in doing. And again, I felt no condemnation from God. I felt no nothing of his disapproval, just love. And he just consumed all of those things so that my scroll had no record of those things in my life. Now, our scrolls contain God's desire for our immortality, not our death. And immortality is not just about life, not ending. Therefore, it's quantity. It's also about the eternal quality of life and the abilities that that life unveils. Those qualities relate to our ability as sons of God. So God has made us to be uniquely, wonderfully, individually his sons. And he made us not to die. And that was his intention, that we would have an ongoing, continual relationship that would never end. Now, he has made it certain that we will be restored back to that face to face relationship with him. Ephesians 1, 4. But we're in this sort of transition. Of coming into the full reality of everything that God intended, and that also means our immortality. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.